looks like HDB prices is set to fall from here. Hi everyone, this is Pete here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to go through some of the latest information that came out in the HDB market and why do I think likelihood in the future, HDB prices is likely to fall from the current level. Right now, what we see in the market is that there are a lot of new price record that's being set by HDB sale, right? It was a 1.5 million and right now we even saw a 1.7 million at Margaret Drive, right? Is this sustainable or not? I think one important thing that a lot of people are looking at right now is also the impact of the latest type of HDB BTO flat, which is known as the plus and prime flat, okay? So this is where I think it's gonna have a big impact on the HDB prices over here, right? Let's go through it step by step and see what are the changes over here. So if you can see uh, over here, right? Uh, these are the new categories in the HDB world, right? Other than the standard flat, which is the current type of flats, we're going to have a plus and prime flat. So by now, you would already know that there are certain differences, but I just want to highlight some of them which are going to have a detrimental impact on HDB prices. And number one is the subsidies recovery, okay? So right now, we already saw the news that the subsidies recovery is going to be ranging between 6 to 9%. The good news is that it is going to only impact the new flats. So if you're buying a resale plus and prime flat 10 years from now, this is not going to impact you, okay? However, the wait for you to buy a resale plus and prime flat is going to be really long because right now the new buyers are going to serve a 10-year MOP over here. So this is the first no-no already, right? It's going to really impact uh, the decision making of people because when you're buying a 10-year MOP, one thing that you need to remember is that there's a lot of things that can change in 10 years, you know, right? It is not just a simple 10 years, it's that you're going through different phases in life, right? In the last 10 years, you probably from a graduate to kind of like the height of your career probably, right? So the needs going to be very different. You may have kids, you may have pets, I don't know. So 10 years is a really long time. So do you want to tie yourself to that, right? So that will actually impact, huh? the resellability because the people who are buying resale plus and prime, while you don't have to pay the subsidy clawback, you still have to serve a 10-year MOP over here, okay? Now, the next thing is, of course, you cannot rent out the whole flat. Now, this is something that has been mentioned a couple of times, but I don't know if it really uh, sinks into people's mind, right? Is that if you're not allowed to rent out the whole flat, what it indirectly also mean, okay? Um, maybe I'll be corrected uh, later on, but what I hear from it is that that means you have to stay in the house, right? You, you cannot rent out the whole flat. That also means that you have to stay in the house. Maybe you can rent out one room, two rooms, but you cannot change your residential address away from this flat. So I think this is quite restrictive as well, okay? So this is the third point that I think is really going to impact uh, people's desirability to buy these flats. Okay, let's talk about subsidy clawback. If you look at the amount of clawback over here, it's between 6 to 9%, right? Uh, depending on how central the location is. And... To be honest, I'm quite surprised uh, that the Bayshore Flats has only a 7% subsidy clawback given how popular it is, okay, right? So I honestly think this is actually uh, more closer to the bottom 8 to 9%, but it is what it is, okay? How does this impact you? Is that, let's assume, uh, let's assume you're going to buy one of these flat, the four-room flat, maybe the five-room flat, and you're going to sell it at 1.5 million in the future, okay? What does that mean? That means... If you're going to pay around 6 to 9%, this is the amount of money that you need to pay back, okay? So remember, the clawback is not on your purchase price, but it's on your sale price, right? So if you're looking at 6%, that is about 90K, right? All the way up to, if you're going to pay, going to pay back 9%, that's 135K. Now, what is the impact over here? Is that for the first round of buyers who bought, okay, and you're going to pay this clawback, what it also means is that it's potentially going to eat into your uh, next round purchasing power because you're going to sell this place and likely what you will do is when I do one-on-one -on -one consultation with my clients, right? Very common, they will take the funds from this sale to make the down payment from a larger property. Maybe you're buying a 2 million flat, uh, a condo, you're buying a 2.5 million condo, so on and so forth. That means your down payment is straight away going to be less of 135k right? Between 90 to 135k. That will impact your overall purchase price by close to half a million, you know, because down payment is only about 25%. So just be very aware how is this going to impact, right? Next time when the seller is going to sell, how are they going to price it? Now, of course, the question people will ask is, hey, will sellers be able to offload this cost 
to the buyer? Honestly, I don't think so. Why? Because ultimately, the overall HDB price in the area is going to be compared across the board. So, for example, if there's one block of flat that has the subsidy clawback and one block does not have, it doesn't mean that buyers are willingly going to pay you 100k more just because you are the subsidy clawback uh, unit. Okay? And right now, they are building a lot of this plus and prime flat in the more desirable location where you can really compare with the older flats as well. So just think about it, right? Why would anybody pay about 100 to 135k more simply because you have the subsidy clawback? It is not their problem, okay? Right? Now, on top of all the restrictions that I just mentioned, there are a few more, okay? Now, over here, this is uh, some other addition. Number one is that under the new model, both plus and prime flat, okay, you can only sell to household with at least one Singapore citizen. Now, the other model in the standard flat, actually, if you are a purely permanent resident family, that means both of you are permanent residents or we call PR, you are able to apply, you are able to buy. But for these guys, okay, it's not just at the get-go when you're applying for BTO, even at the resale, you cannot sell to a pure PR family. You need to have one uh, citizen, okay? So that will already reduce some of the demand. Later, we're going to look at how much demand is that, okay? And the next thing is that both prime and plus flat, you're going to be subjected to the income ceiling of $14,000. Now, this is going to have a huge impact, okay? Huge impact in terms of the ability to take the loan, okay? Which I'll share with you the actual amount later on. And the last restriction is that it's not just the 15 standard months of waiting uh, for private property owners to buy a HDB flat. In this case, they are going to wait double the time, which is 30 months. Okay, so this is another uh, jab in the price uh, that's going to cause the desirability of this prime and plus flat to drop uh, quite a fair bit. Okay, now let's go through number one, the first point about PR household unable to buy first. And if you look over here, there was a very helpful stats that was given out by the government in the 20, year 2022. So this number may have changed, right? But they said that the number of flats that was owned by a uh, permanent residence household was ranging between 47,000, okay, which is about 6%, uh, to about 44,000, which is 4% back in 2021, right? So they believe that this dropped also because of the waiting time when uh, PR needs to wait for three years uh, after they attain PR to buy an HDB flat. So what this means is that the impact on the demand is likely going to fall between 4 to 6%. Now, the next point about the income ceiling is that with a limit of 14K income ceiling, if you're taking a loan, that also means that your max loan capacity uh, is going to be limited. Okay, Over here, this is the HDB loan where you're borrowing for 25 years. And I'm assuming that you are the youngest possible. Okay, The amount of loan you can borrow is just shy of 800,000. Whereas if you're taking a bank loan, you can borrow for 30 years, you will be about... 1 million in terms of loan, okay? So what does this mean? That means if you're looking at those property that is previously selling at 1.5, 1.7, right now, people are able to borrow up to 75% of that amount, 1.5 million, 1.7 million. But in the future, they probably can't because the buyers of this flat, the income ceiling is $14,000. That means they can only borrow to about 1 million. What does that mean? That means the rest of it, okay, right, to, pay, to top up to about 1.7, 1.5, you're going to pay what we call the cash over valuation, right? Now, we see this a lot back in the days, back in 2010, 2013, okay? But later on, you know, when government start to build more HDB, increase the supply and the demand kind of flattens out, this whole thing about cash over valuation uh, disappears. Now, would this happen again? My own prediction is that very likely, yes, because we are once again having a situation whereby the government is having a lot of new HDB flats that's being produced. Eventually, people will just be thinking, hey, you know, I just go and uh, book a BTO, right? And in the BTO build timing has been shorter and shorter and shorter. Now, in fact, the fastest BTO, I think it's around just two plus years to close to three years. So it's quite a short wait, right? So why would people want to pay a huge amount for a resale flat when they can just wait for maybe two to three years and having paid like maybe a lot lesser, right? So this whole thing about the loan, I think is going to be have a huge impact because Anybody who wants to pay 1.5, 1.7, they will have to pay a huge amount of cash in order to sustain uh, this current pricing. Okay? The last round we saw was around here, 2012, 2013, and later off, it just tapers off. Now, of course, there are many other factors that tapers off, but I really think that the COV system is not sustainable because the valuation, right, is going to be so much higher 
but it doesn't matter because people are not able to take the loan. The next one is the 30 months waiting time. Now, this is also very impactful because that means effectively, uh, uh, those cash-rich family, they are downsizing, right? They are effectively off the game, right? Another question is, hey, Pete, you know, right now, if I'm older than 55, I don't have to wait. I can straight away buy a four-room flat. Uh, would that apply? Now, I'm looking through all the regulations. It seems like this 55-year-old point, it only applies to the standard flat. So I believe for the prime and plus flat right now, it still seems like a 30-month wait, you know. So once again, guys, right now, I believe a lot of people who are paying $1.5, $1.7 million for HDB are the very cash-rich buyers who probably downsize for, from a landed property or from a private condo. Now, with this rule, the 30-month rule, that applies regardless of the age, right, very likely is going to deter a lot of such buyers. Now, I might be wrong about the 55 year. If I'm wrong about that, then this point doesn't stand. But otherwise, I think this is going to have a huge impact on the price as well. So overall, I don't know if you all have uh, seen enough. To me, this reminds me of a phrase called death by a thousand cuts. Now, I'm not saying the HDB here is going to die, but I think it's a very similar situation that's happening is that it is like a price drop by a thousand restrictions. So let me quickly summarize what are these restrictions over here. All right, so you can see number one, we're going to have a 10 year MOP. So the question is, are people are willing to buy a place that they will tie down for 10 years or they will just opt for the older type of HDB flats okay right and you cannot rent up in full so does it mean that you have to stay there so that's the second problem the third issue is the subsidy clawback which will effectively reduce your down payment for the next property okay and without the PR family buying there's going to be about a small four to six percent drop so it's not it's like many many cuts uh, to reduce the price okay let's go to the fifth cut which is to me the most impactful one which is the resale income ceiling with a max loan of 1 million guess what not many people can upfront pay cash of half a million 700,000 just to buy an HDB flat so I think this is going to have a huge uh, impact on limiting the upward movement of the price and last but not least of course the 30 month waiting time this is going to reduce the private buyers from coming into the market. So overall, I think really, you know, the government has come up with a very comprehensive model, right? Multiple restrictions to gradually lower the price of the future HDB, okay? But I think the saving grace for those of you who still want to buy the plus and prime flat is that the majority of the properties right now, the HDBs are still the older type, right? Which doesn't have all these restrictions, okay? So what it means is that the overall price drop, okay, uh, it's not going to be so rapid, right? So for example, this plus and prime flat, maybe they cannot sell at 1.5 million, 1.7 million. They will sell at maybe 1.1, 1.2. And when it compares to the older flat, right, it will look like, wow, they are so cheap. So maybe buyers will want to go for from here and starting to lower the older price flat. But the thing is, majority is still the older ones. Okay, so I think this is the so-called the short-term uh, buffer, right? My own prediction is that going forward, I think the short-term prices are still going to be quite resilient because this is the majority uh, of the HDB housing in Singapore. However, in the long term, as there are more and more plus and prime flat, I do expect the price to reduce from the current peak over here. Okay? So guys, what do you think about the current situation? Do you think that HDB prices are going to start falling from here in the longer term future? All right, let me know your comments below. And once again, guys, if you all like such content, such analysis about uh, property analysis in Singapore, okay, do like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.